morning everybody, it's almost 5.30 a.m. Jewel and I are awake and we are about to head to the airport to go to Japan. At 5.30 in the morning, we boarded our flight from Seattle, Washington to Tokyo, Japan with one layover in Honolulu, Hawaii. <laughs> For our super super long flight, we hopped on a train using our Swiga card. The train station was directly connected to the airport. We took a train to Shibuya where our hotel was located. Morning everybody, welcome to day one in Tokyo, Japan. This is our itty bitty tiny hotel room. We are staying at Hotel Wing International Premium Shibuya. This hotel is super small. This is the front door right here and there's this really narrow hallway where my suitcase is taking up most of the walking space. We have a bathroom on the left here and then right ahead is the rest of the hotel room. This is all the walking space there is right here next to the bed. A little TV, a little folding desk. Yeah, this is the hotel room. It's about 7 a.m. right now. The hotel supposedly has breakfast so we're gonna go check that out too. I'm so excited to be here. The breakfast was really good. There was coffee, really good orange juice and lemonade every morning, and the food was good as well. And it was just an easy way to start the day, especially if you're traveling with a partner. You don't want to get hangry and get into fights, so it was amazing that first thing in the morning, we didn't have to think about food. Breakfast was so good this morning. Now we're slowly headed towards Team Lab. It's still a little early in the morning. Most of these places aren't open yet. Um, but we're gonna slowly just walk towards Team Lab. On our walk over to the Team Lab Museum, we started to get a little bit thirsty. So we stopped into bread, espresso, and a cafe that we just walked by. I've been really excited to try the matcha in Japan, and I was not disappointed. That's so good. It is so freaking beautiful. I am freaking out that we are here right now. Come with us to grab a train in Japan. Honestly, it was all really easy. We could fully rely on Google Maps. So we just put our final destination to Google Maps. And as long as you follow the signs in the train station, you'll know exactly where to go, what train to catch, and what stop to get off at. So in this example, we had to take the Hanselman line. We were taking it to the next stop over. We used our Swiga card at the gate to get in. Track four is going to Oshiaiki, and track three is going to Shibuya. Uh, so it says like Z03 to Z01, Z03 to Z14. And we want to go to Z04, so track 4 is going to be where we want to catch the train. We made it to where we meant to go, and we didn't make any mistakes this time. Good job, Julian. I never make mistakes. We're at a park right now because we're a little early for our Team Lab's reservation. Team Lab Planus is a museum where you walk the water and a garden where you become one with the flowers. It comprises four large-scale artwork spaces and two gardens created by Art Collective Team Lab. I get a little worried about seeing things that are really hyped up because I don't want to be disappointed. <laughs> Okay. I give it like an 8.5 out of 10. I gave it like a loose okay. 10 out of 10, but it was a little crowded, but I think we expected that. I feel like it really made you bring out your inner child because everything's kind of designed a little bit like a playground, so it was very cool to see. I would recommend.
we went back to the hotel at like 4 p.m. and we took a juicy, juicy nap. Now it's like four hour now. Yeah, now it's like 10 30. We're heading out again. We're gonna go get some dinner. Is it raining? And we're gonna try to stay up a little bit later so that we don't wake up so early tomorrow. Oh my gosh, wait, it's raining. Ichiran Ramen is a chain ramen place in Japan and the ramen here was good. It wasn't the best ramen we had in Japan, but the experience was super unique. Ordering ramen from a vending machine and also eating in these individual booths and being served by people through a little window where you never had to see their face. I would recommend it for the experience. I don't think the ramen here is a must-have though. Good morning everybody, today is day two in Tokyo. Today we're mostly going to explore Shibuya and Shinjuku. We're just going to walk around aimlessly, go to some cafes, do a little shopping. It's still a little early, it's 10.30 a.m. Most of the cafes and shops don't open until 11 a.m. So I think we're going to go to a nearby park first, explore that, and then by the time we're done with that, all the places should be open by then. We are in Yoyogi Park. This is really close to our hotel. It took us like five minutes to get here. And we looked at the park map and there looks like there is a cherry tree blossom area. Also a dog run that may or may not be a dog park. The dogs here in Japan are so well groomed. I've seen so many dogs with such cool haircuts. So I really want to go to the dog park and see if I can see more doggos. Do you think they allow scooters? We're walking around Harajuku and we're looking for a coffee shop that we bookmarked on Google Maps. I'm excited to go to all the little cute cafes. The cafe we're trying to find is called Dotcom Space Tokyo. space it was underground so it was a little bit hard to find but the space is so pretty I got the pour over cafe Julie got a latte we also got the seasonal waffle dish so I am very very excited the prices in Japan have been so cheap for food so far but then again we're used to Seattle prices we spent like $20 on sushi for lunch yesterday and we got omakase and a chirashi bowl miso soup and green tea and all of it was really good this was the first aesthetic cafe we went to and throughout my trip in japan i was surprised by how many aesthetic beautiful cafes we came across i never thought a cafe could be life-changing but honestly i was so inspired by all the beautiful cafes we went to japan is really famous for their product design and i also love their interior style so just being in this environment in the coffee shops made me so happy we're walking through the main street in Harajuku right now and there are so many freaking cute stores but we need to find cash. A lot of these places are cash only and we haven't had to use cash in Japan yet. So we're on the hunt for a family mart so that we can find an ATM so that we can withdraw some Japanese yen. There's a lot of people around here. We found ATMs! This is like a toy store filled with these little capsules where you can get these mystery boxes of miniature things and I am freaking obsessed with miniatures and little cute figurines so I am in heaven right now. I am freaking out internally. I don't know what to get 
I exchanged for a bunch of coins and I'm about to go ham on these capsule machines. Oh my god, it's shaped like him. <laughs> Oh my god, there's so many the different options. I think we got this one. Rice, with a little side salad, and the curry on top. Hello everyone, we are at Kyukatsu Matomura Harajuku in Harajuku. Basically it's a tonkatsu place and we stood outside in the stairwell waiting for an hour and a half to get in. We didn't even know what it looked like inside, but it has a lot of reviews on Google and now that we're in here, we can see why it took so long because there aren't that many seats. It's like 3 p.m. and the only thing we really had today was breakfast and then that waffle and coffee. It's now 4.30. Oh, now it's 4.30 p.m. The jet lag doesn't have us that hungry, but I'm still excited for the food regardless. Me too, I'm so hungry. <laughs> You're hungry now? No, I am, yeah. I am telling you, this was the best meal I have ever had in my entire life. This is kyokatsu, so it is beef, and they serve it to you kind of raw, and you place it onto this hot stone plate to finish cooking it off for a couple of seconds. I'm sweating so much right now, but this is the best beef I have ever had in my life. The taste and texture are like nothing I've ever had before. It's like so juicy and the sauces on it are incredible. 1000% worth the wait. If I'm ever giving a friend recommendations on what to do in Tokyo, this is 100% going on that list. We got the one cutlet. The cutlet's kind of small. Get more. Get the one and a half or two cutlet. After that amazing meal, we headed over to Shinjuku for the nightlife. We went to Omoidi Yokocho. I might be completely butchering that, but it's a maze of narrow alleys full of tiny little bars, izakaya style. Izakaya is a type of informal Japanese bar that serves alcohol and snacks. They seat anywhere from like 2 up to 10 people per bar. The next morning, we stumbled into a random coffee shop and it was the Streamer Coffee Company. This coffee shop is super interesting because it's American themed. They were playing country music, there were beer bottles as decor, there were a lot of foreign people working in this coffee shop. So if you are traveling Japan for a long time, need to get some work done, this seemed like a great spot for that. Buddy, we are in Uni, a coffee shop. We didn't end up getting coffee here because we were a little bit hungry and wanted coffee sooner before we could get here. But now I kind of wish we got it here because the space is so pretty. There's a cool coffee shop though. It's very green inside with lots of like little trees and shrubbery everywhere. Yeah, I would come here next time and get coffee, maybe some food. Coffee shops have been a great place for us to regroup and kind of figure out what we're doing next. There is no shortage of cool and aesthetic coffee shops in Tokyo. It's actually crazy. <laughs> Oh. 
Harajuku is known for all of its animal cafes. We saw otter cafes, Shiba cafes. It was a little unclear whether these animal cafes were all 100% ethical, so we decided to go with a cat cafe that seemed like a safer bet. And these cats were so freaking cute! Julian is allergic to cats, and even he had a great time because the kitties were so playful and so cute. For our last night in Tokyo, we decided to ball out a little bit and we went to this Korean Japanese fusion barbecue place. The meal was about 50 US dollars per person. We ordered a bunch of side dishes like beef soup, a kimchi platter with a bunch of different kinds of kimchi, an amazing side salad, scallion pancake, and for the main course, a platter of wagyu beef, including A5 wagyu. This meal was a little too good for my brain because it started triggering feelings of guilt, imposter syndrome. I started thinking, why me? What did I do to deserve this? I don't know if anyone else ever feels this on vacation, but that feeling lasted for the next couple of days into Kyoto and Osaka. So stay tuned for that. Part two coming next.